Alrighty, guys, welcome back to the Bilgola 500 Pursuit Episode 2. We have got a Bilgola 500 superstar with us today. We've got George from Division 1 joining us on the podcast. How are you, George? Hi, Sean. Good. Good. Thanks for having me here. My absolute pleasure. We've, uh, we've got a little bit to cover, but I thought maybe the first thing we can do is talk about Episode 1 with Sam. And he's not here to stand up for himself. So maybe we just talk about Sam because I feel like he's sort of the glue between you guys creating the course. Obviously, us as his old friends that now he doesn't talk to that he's found you guys. You mates. And he's, uh, he's sort of brought this all together. So tell me how you know Sam. So I know Sam through Bryn, I believe. Okay. Bryn said this, this local guy, Sam, who's a runner, and had talked about him a little bit when we've been running locally. Yep. And I think Brim went on a run with him one day. And I think Sam talked to this on the first podcast. That was his entry into the Div 1, you know, <laughs> trying to get in uh, with a new new friendship group, which I was finding very funny in your first podcast. <laughs> um, and yeah, and then I started to do some runs with Sam and Brin and, and I think Warren. And yeah, he's progressed quickly as a runner. Like... Yep. Um, would you consider Sam in Div One? Would you put him in there? Because I, I, I think he's still a fringe athlete. I mean, he's he's his UTA hundred time was phenomenal. Very good. Um, isn't it? So like, and I ran with him. You know, we did the Palmy Punisher, which we may turn into a race one day. Forty two k of two thousand meters of vert up and down f- from Newport to Palm Beach and back, which is a brutal run. And we did it together. And that whole day, he was focusing on, you know sub 14 hours and he got a 12 40 something yeah that's faster than i did it um so yeah i think he's got an injury at the moment carrying a bit of an injury but um he's one of those runners who's going to progress loads and he's now got a coach i think he'll progress even more yeah i i disagree with you i don't think he's gonna do very well on the day <laughs> at all i think he just hasn't got the mental toughness i think he's quite weak upstairs and uh, and now he's just using the foot as an excuse. But that's just my personal opinion. Yeah. I, I could be wrong on Sam, but that's where well, I you, sit with Sam. You know, you've known him for longer, so I'm just going to agree with everything you <laughs> say on Sam. Yeah. I'm sure he's he, got no chance. I'm sure he'll hate that as well. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, on the on the first podcast, no, I, I thought it how he brought all the analysis of the course. It's quite surreal for me because obviously the 500 is something that Warren and I created um, to have a podcast dropped on it. <laughs> Here's episode one of the podcast, which I found funny. I mean, there's a multiple episode podcast coming out, which is now, you know, now I'm on one. Um, yeah, quite surreal. And But going through the course and the clockwise versus anti-clockwise and the runner analysis about what we would favor which types of runners was actually amazing to listen to and how accurate do you think he was like did you th- listen to it and go you know what he's sort of onto this i thought it was really impressive oh um, yeah okay i didn't agree with my the analysis of me liking clockwise more than anti because of the technical climbs okay. or something but because i love the anti-clockwise loop that'd be my preference on race day oh really um i'm not sure why i think just finishing at lumbar is so brutal mm-hmm. um yeah, that's the anti, right? So, um, yes, um, I thought he was spot on. His analysis of between the runners, like me, Warren, and Bryn, were, it was amazing. Like looking at when we did that run, because we did one real hard effort together, and I think he got all his data from that. So when you say together, the three of you started together and sort of raced it, or yeah. like you sort of ran with each other? No, we went hard. Okay, um, and I, every man for themselves. Yeah, you weren't yeah. staying with each other. It you, was not yeah. a friendly run, really. It was deep <laughs> down. I mean, look, I think. Rin's pretty chilled, so he was probably like whatever. But in the end of the day, I got me and Warren are pretty competitive, okay. and I think we were really pushing it. Um, and we were all finished within about a minute of each other. But that was my PR on the course that day. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so no, I thought his analysis was amazing. Like he talks about Warren's competitive nature. Like I'm a bit scared of Warren on race day. <laughs> <laughs> uh, like I very rarely, apart from maybe that one loop when we all ran together me Bryn and warren i've not got close to warren in a competition he's just an okay. animal yeah um so I'm the sh- opposite to sam paul now he's probably got his it's all upstairs he's just full of strength upstairs I'd say warren and Bryn are quite opposite in terms of okay. like and yeah probably i don't i don't know how competitive sam is really i don't I haven't sensed that yet but okay. warren's competitive so you know if it comes down to like that final chase warren you don't want to see warren after you like that's what 
So what what Sam picked in terms of Warren's competitive streak is like we're spot on as well. I like the idea of Warren being, you know, I assume we haven't done the handicaps yet, but I assume Warren. Would you agree that Warren's going to be the last person to start? Yeah, it's or him or Rich Barry. It's a tough one because well, Sam put me as favourite probably because I'm the, got the fastest time currently. There's so such a little gap between me, Warren, Bryn, and Rich. Um, so sorry yeah, to cut you it's off. Hard but to know. Do you think when you we start you guys at mm. the end, like there's going to be twelve seconds apart? Yeah, I do. Five seconds apart. I think like, is it going to be that close? Yeah, I think it's going to be like sub thirty seconds gap. Okay, and between yourself, yeah. Warren. Bryn, Rich? I think that, yeah, I don't, on the day, I think us four will finish within a minute of each other. Okay. Yeah, almost definitely. And depending on the handicapping, you know, it could finish right on top of each other. Yeah, but yeah, if yeah. you if you just run it flat out, I think there'd be about a minute gap or less. So it's fascinating, really. And you don't want to see, like, Warren, that's why I keep coming back to, he's competitive. Like, yeah. he loves to run. And I think he's that guy that... um you know, he'll just go all out and chase you down. He's competitive. This makes it even more terrifying for me when I think about this because not only I was, I've been picturing running the Big Oil 500 and just seeing one person at mm. a time sort of come up behind me and me going, oh, shit, I've got to stay in front of him. Yeah. But the idea of the four of you starting within 10 seconds of each other or 20 seconds, whatever yeah. it may end up being, is going to be like the four of you as a, tr- a chain. That's what's going to happen. Is going to come yeah. and like hunt each of us down. Yeah. It's just an, as an awesome. And part of this beauty of this this course is that handicapping is so interesting. And I was talking to my coach about this and the idea of just having to bring that into your, you know, overtaking in some parts is going to be hard. Yeah. So there's parts of the course where overtaking is easy and parts where it's not so easy. And yeah, I think when you've got four people trying to run as a pack, that's going to make it interesting too. <laughs> but yeah, no, there's no, there's no doubt that if we went and ran it all together, similar fitness, and we can talk a bit about going into the race because what it will be is about our preparation for the race. Yeah. And I can talk about my coach, Joe. Joe, big shout out to Aspire <laughs> to strength training and run training. Um, wearing the merchandise today, Joe, for the for your uh, your brand. Um, as a sponsored athlete should do. The demands on sponsored athletes these days are, are significant. Oh, actually, just on that. Uh, Joe. I don't want to let you down, and uh, I've got obviously a bit of merch on here for Aspire, and of course, <laughs> been a, what is this? It's a is it a buff? Is it? I don't know. Let's have a look. I got sent this one as well. Oh no, it is a buff. So you know, I've got this buff as well. I might just put it around my wrist for now, just to keep it did a bit more Aspire gear there. Did there you go. bring that just for the podcast? Just for the podcast. <laughs> there you go. Shout I've been out saving Joe. it. Been saving <laughs> it for this podcast. So does that mean? Actually, before I go into that, because I do want to speak about the specific training that now has been happening <laughs> across the board, you know, like yeah. everyone's been out there scouting it and stuff. Yeah. Are you, I know Sam, he's injured. Mm. I think he's got a sore toe or something. Um, Warren, Bryn, like the Div 1 guys that we we're referring to, are you guys on specific training programs for this race? Well, Warren is uncoachable. Uncoachable. He's, he is um, a wild a wild dog out there. No one's going to coach him. Okay. Um, so yeah, if, if Warren was coached, then it would be terrifying <laughs> because he's uncoached and he kind of does whatever he wants. You know, Warren's famous for, I think it was, buff, oh, it was um, the one in New Zealand, Terrawera. Terrawera, yeah. He was going out to do the 100K in Terrawera and most people taper the week before and Warren cannot say no to a run. Yeah. And this is why I put it in as a strength and a weakness for him in his in his profile. And um I think, you know, the week before you're thinking, relax, relax, but Warren goes to um does Brooklyn to I don't know, so he ran through the Great North Walk for forty forty kilometers the week before the week before Saturday the before two thousand forty K. Just because his mate Corey, who whenever Corey asks him anything, Warren's straight there. Um yeah, so he doesn't have any sort of concept of uh, of tapering. Tapering, no, or, so nah. he, I feel like he's just. Uh, I haven't met Warren, obviously, but all the stories and the uh, the folk folklore that's going around. Mm. 
I just picture him like living in the bush, just like <laughs> running to the own beat of his drum, you know, just doing his thing. Like yeah. I, I imagine he just kills his own animals to eat. Like that's sort of how I picture Warren. That's Warren. In that's what, nu- okay. In, in a so, nutshell. And to yeah. think he's going to be chasing me down on the day and the rest of us is terrifying. He's a savage. Um, okay, so so Warren, uncoachable. Uncoachable. Not doing He'll it. do whatever he wants. How about you? And let's talk about you, Sam, Bryn. Sam will be on a plan now with Joe. Yep. And Joe, shout out Aspire 2 training strength at Aspire at strength, as whatever, you know. Shout out. <laughs> get the handle. Okay. Like, and, like and describe. Subscribe. <laughs> So that went anyway, smooth. That went really smooth. I, I listen to a podcast. They say like and describe, which I like. Um, <laughs> so like and describe it. Aspire to, but um, no. Aspire is Joe's brand. I've been coached from for like three years now, and um, Sam is also on that journey now. Yeah. Um, and to be honest, with with coaching, I've I wanted to talk a bit about it because I actually had a call with her on um, earlier this week, Wednesday or something. And we went through my plan for, the, for 45 minutes detail around Bill Gola pursuit. Oh, this is incredible. Um, this is amazing. so we broke down every single session for the next eight weeks, um, from today to race day. And, um, it involves, <laughs> I mean, all seriousness, Joe's analysis and attention to detail is incredible. Yeah. Um, terrifying sometimes. <laughs> and, um, she's very much focused on deloading me still after the UTA 50 race. Yep. So you see a lot of athletes just push on, like just keep going, keep going. And um, she's actually found data from 2021. And this is interesting where I did UTA 50 2021 in a similar time to this year. And then I got plantar fasciitis for five weeks. So I had a natural deload for five weeks. And then I ran the Bill Gola 520 7th of July or something weirdly. And I got a really good time then. So she's looked at the data and went, look, you're, you're deloading for five weeks is similar to what we're doing now. Yeah. And then you're going to build hard. And this build, she's got this thing programmed. It's very, um, you've got to do a lot of short stuff, um, mm. working on transition, like, you know, the big climbs and keeping the pace up on transition and um, speed and downhill as well. So it's a really structured program and it builds and builds and builds. I'm going to Europe for a few weeks, so it'll be hard to keep it going, but I'm going to keep my absolute best. And, yeah, it's really specific to this race. That's incredible. Yeah. I absolutely yeah. love the idea that there's a program specifically around the Bill oh. 500 Pursuit. Yeah. I would say this race is the, we, we said it on the first podcast, but I, I think it's the biggest thing on the Northern Beaches for sure. It's huge. It's huge. It's, it's absolutely massive. I mean, I thought my my, my Cozy Miler was going to be a um, my biggest race of my, my running time, but this is bigger. Yeah, um, huge. What time did you run Cozy Miler in? 22 hours... 50 or something like that. Ooh, so just definitely. beat me. Beat me by 11 hours. <laughs> did you do the miler? Yeah, I did the oh, miler. Oh, cool. I did not know that. <laughs> yeah. Amazing. You, yeah, you just got ahead of me. Hey, awesome. have a look down there to your right on the floor. Yeah. See that? That's the Bugola 500 Pursuit Trophy. We won't show anyone. Oh, right. But can you see? Yeah, yeah. So you've got a little look inside to the left, left, left. Oh, wow. Oh, my goodness. Yeah, okay. <laughs> there you go. It <laughs> is a serious... Little. And honestly, it's uh, like I was saying earlier, it's so... It's so interesting having a race in your own backyard. And it actually, you said on the first podcast, it means a bit to me. It really does. Like oh, that's when, awesome. when, when we slogged it, me, Bryn and Warren, I think the only reason I pipped them that day is because I actually, you know, it's on my back door. And yeah. I just like, I need to beat these guys here. Um, I'm so, yeah. so glad uh, Sam actually said to me when I said to him, because obviously Sam was the one we found out about Bugola 500. We were training for Cosy Myler and stuff like that. We wanted mm-hmm. elevation. It's mm-hmm. like, oh, I hit this 10. And then like I sort of came up with this idea of doing the race and he's like, you have to speak to the guys. And obviously we'd never met this first time we're meeting, but I'm so glad he did say that because if we were to go run this race and you guys weren't involved, now knowing what it means to you guys, we were, I would have felt like an asshole, you know, like it would have been, I don't think it would have been legitimate in any way, shape or form. So I'm glad Sam stepped in and said, "Uh uh-uh, you only can do this if the boys give you the permission. Yeah. So, well, oh, I think trail running seems so it's kind of small, eh? like so everyone knows everyone in a way. So it's just no, it's it's really awesome. I didn't even know other people were training on the five hundred really. So I knew yeah. like a few people were were doing it that I knew, um, and I've invited a guy called Paul McBride who he um, also did the Cosy Miler. Okay, um, and he's he loves coming up. To, he lives down towards Manly Way, but he loves coming up to. Newport area and doing stuff like the 500 and yep. Palmy punishes one of his favorites runs. Um, so yeah, I've, um, 
yeah, I knew some people were doing it, but I didn't know there's more people. <laughs> then I saw Amy go out and do like a double one day, you know? Yeah. And it's like, man, I've already not done that too many times myself. And actually a good story about the, the five, the thousand. So being able to do one loop and then the other loop and, you know, again, this is Warren. Warren, you better listen to this, by the way. I'm talking <laughs> about you a bloody lot. You probably won't even listen to it. Um, one thing's for sure: you won't get him on a podcast. The only oh, way, really? Is the, that on, a... the only way you get Warren to do stuff on camera or anything is if you just literally trick him into it, and which is how my coach Joe did. She said, "Oh, Warren, let's have a coffee," and um, he was like, "Yeah, sure, I'll come for a coffee." And as soon as she got there, got the camera out on him and just started interviewing him about a hundred mile race he just won. <laughs> so, um, but anyway, yeah, once I once I the thousand, you know, the cleanness, the how clean it is to do a thousand twenty k thousand meter gain. And then Warren and I were like, let's go sub two hours because you just don't see it that often. You know, mm -hmm. you don't see in statistics 20K, 1,000 for below two yeah. hours. And Warren straight, or like, you know, once you like that flame, it's game yes. over. I think the next day or something, he went and did it. <laughs> but he and did. Just he, to clarify, it's plus minus. So yeah. clockwise anti. Yeah. yeah. Clockwise anti. I can't remember which way he did it, but he got a stress fracture in his leg, I think around the first loop and um, felt real pain and just. I think he did his first loop in something like 57 minutes and then plowed on and did the next one in like an hour. So he did it in an hour 56, hour 57. But the second one, he had actually fractured his leg <laughs> and that put him out for the next three months. So I've been terrified of trying to repeat that. But I know even talking about this now, this is what's dangerous about Warren. This is what's funny. Even mentioned it on the chat the other day. You can see he's good. he wants to do it. And I wouldn't put, I would put, put money on him trying it or something like this now we've mentioned it before the race because that's what he does <laughs> but yeah I, it's always scared me because there's just trying to hit those two loop two loops sub an hour it's absolutely oh, it's, it's unbelievable. insane it's, like, like for for us div i'm gonna say i'm div two and for the let's call the other guys div four I, like for us to think of one loop under an hour is just like unbelievable to be able to do that for two hours with that kind of vert is insane yeah. is there any chance warren just doesn't show up no, he'll, he'll be there. One hundred percent. One hundred percent. He'll be 100%. there. One hundred percent. Most the most likely to show up is Warren. Okay. Because we're talking about it. Yeah, and yeah, yeah. It's planted the seed now. Okay. It's job, it's job done. So Warren hasn't really said much in the group chat, and by the sounds <laughs> of it, that's very, uh, very on brand for him. But something I, I did get from Warren, he hasn't spoke to me at all. Just on Strava the other day, I, I went for a run, and all he wrote was thrown question mark <laughs> that was it that's the first thing we've ever said to each other and i thought to myself oh, fuck, i don't even know what that means i can and explain then, it to you well then i went and done my research and thought yeah. so then uh two days ago i went and ran the throne oh, nice. did a couple repeats of the throne Good on you. and i got a comment from warren now do 10 <laughs> <laughs> it's because there's a segment called mount bayview there which is 10 times repeat of the throne and um for anyone who hasn't run that hill Get yourself over to Church that's, Point. That's awesome. 100 meter gain, 107 or something over like 800 meters or Where, less. It's incredible. Is it to the top of the staircase? Yeah, basically. Down I think you can go a like, little bit further, but the top of the stairs ish, turn around, go back, 10 yeah, repeats. Yeah. But it's a hell of a bang for your buck on that one. Yeah. Um, and so, yeah, the 10 times is a f segment which Warren has actually just tried to get recently, but he didn't get it off the current holder. Do you know who the current guy is? His name's Frankie. Bill Toft is in okay. Narrabeen. Yeah. Um, comes and goes with his running. Like he's doing none at the moment. When he's on, he's unbelievable. Okay. So but, um, but yeah, so um, yeah, Warren's, he'll be there 100%. He'll okay, be there on time. He's know. so reliable. Let's talk about Rich Barry, shall we? Well, R Rich Barry recently did, when he did the yeah. loop in a ridiculous time. Mm. I thought he, so obviously not knowing Rich and you can tell us all about him. I thought he was like a, um, you know, just a, a throwaway friend, you know, come along for the ride. And then I saw his time. I went, oh, my God, we've got another Div 1 guy in here. This guy's yeah. a freak. Yeah, so Rich is 45 or 46. He's a bit older. Like, and that makes it even just as impressive. Warren's also about 45. Okay. Um, but he just gets better every single year, <laughs> as does Rich since he's been running. But, yeah, he's, so Rich is a, an eye surgeon. Um, so he's got an incredibly hectic life kind mm -hmm. of in between weeks, but then spend some time at the weekend where he's got some more time to run. And, um, yeah, he's just an absolute beast on the loops. Um, whenever you run it with him, it's always pretty much sub hour and he's consistently gets like this 56 minute mark, but I think he got like 55 something on the segment. So 
he's he's gone from the UTA 50 and just gone straight into like he went to Lord Howe Island which is a place I love to run and he went there this year and was phenomenal running there and he just has kept going in Canberra and so thing about Rich is he'll it's seven weeks out so you know let's see if he's peaked too early (laughs) this is it like is he peaking too early seven weeks I love that that you said that threw that in there you know you Uh, talked him up and then it just throw that bit of doubt is this, in his mind is this an insurance run from Rich Barry oh, yeah, is what I'm wondering because on the day he blows out to 62 minutes and he goes ah but I did that 56 back in there exactly oh, right. important okay. retina surgery comes up that old chestnut <laughs> oh, I've got this old lady with a retina falling out again oh yeah so oh, look at my time seven weeks ago so okay but no he, he is uh, he's jokes aside he's phenomenal and it, it, water tower stairs is where he blows me away because I would fancy myself as that's where I think is one of my strengths. Yeah. And I do some reps with Rich and he's just amazing at those. He's amazing at the water tower stairs. I can't wait yeah. to see you guys run this stuff. Yeah, you run know? the whole well, thing. I'm not going to see it. Well, it, we'll see. I don't know where I'm going to see you guys, obviously, anti-clockwise, clockwise. But it's going to be nice to see people out on the 500 with yeah. these kind of times. It's we need to figure out people on the finish line to, to do some footage, which we can work out between now and then. But I've got some ideas. Yeah, yeah. We've, uh, we've thrown some stuff out there. We're definitely going to have a... So I've got a camera that's going to be um, on the finish line Perfect. and it's a slow-mo camera. Yeah. So just in case we have someone like literally shoulder to shoulder, we're yeah. going to have to go back to video footage oh my God. to get the, uh, to get the winners. So good. Something I haven't really spoken about yet, but I think that we should do a after run presentation, you know, maybe go to a cafe sure. and we hand the trophy and stuff out there while we have some food, 100%. maybe hear some speeches from the, the winner. Yeah, I thought know? about that. I thought about that on the last podcast. Yeah, um, yeah. Maybe we uh, we start organising that before we move on from these guys. You said Bryn, pretty chill dude. Yeah, Bryn, if you're listening, which you will be actually, because you listened to the last one um, while you were running. What a surprise! Um, yeah, Bryn is the nicest m- nicest bloke you'll ever meet. Okay. Um, he's an estate agent, but he's not like an estate agent. Yeah, those two he's sentences nice <laughs> don't really go well together. Yeah. I'd, I've never, I've no. never seen that before. He's the least like an estate agent you've ever met. Okay. <laughs> um, just a really nice bloke. He weighs about thirty kilos. Okay. Um, so he's been working on the at the gym a lot to try and get his weight above forty kilos. I think he might just be about there. Hey, Bryn. <laughs> Maybe like forty-one at the moment. But um, no, he's he actually genuinely is. If if he trains and work and cares one tenth as much as I do yeah. about this race, he's going to be very hard to beat. Okay. Um, he's very very light, but he's very quick. Um, but he's also doing this strength stuff at the moment. So, yeah, if he gets if he gets into the zone, uh, Sam nailed it on the podcast. I think it's just the strength. This five hundred meters, it's different to three hundred. Mm. Like the um. Well, the Sydney Trail Series, he wins them pretty much every time, but it's yeah. about 250 vert. It's different, isn't 500 it? 500 over 10 is like relentless going up a hill. Yeah. So it's about that strength, which Warren has rich coming from soccer like myself, more stocky, a bit heavier. and um, But Bryn's just a flyer. But if he goes, trains hard and like just, yeah, makes the next eight weeks about this, then very hard to beat. Okay. Um, I'm going to throw this uh, little shout out there to one of our guys called Neil Duns. Mm. You wouldn't have met him yet. I followed him on Strava just okay. the other day. So to give you an idea, you just said they're like a bit stocky, a bit heavy. He's 208 centimeters tall and he's 100 plus kilos. Wow. So he's a monster. Really, is he 208? He's two, He's taller than Sam. Yeah, right. He's taller than Sam, but yeah. he's he's three of Sam because he's yeah. over a hundred kilos. The guy is an yeah. absolute monster. So when yeah. we're talking about being heavy on there, we got to be careful because we do have a big, <laughs> big dog running around as well. And to your point before, trying to get past him. So ex second rower, footy player. I He's not going to let you pass. He's not going to step aside. So that's going to, you know, you're going to have to use a bit of agility around there. Yeah, it's going to be awkward too for me. I don't know him. So yeah, I'm yeah, just yeah. like, mate, get yeah. out of the way. Like, He's a lovely guy too. So you can't really just like, you know. Please, can you get out of the way? I'll, I'll use that, my manners. <laughs> yeah, I would, I would recommend that. Please, can you move? <laughs> yeah, he's definitely the biggest on there for sure. <laughs> hey, so, um, okay. So Bryn, super chill dude, real estate agent, but not yeah. your typical real estate agent. Nah. Nice guy. Okay, nah. And potentially he's going to win. And then yeah. Bryn finally has brought someone to the table as well. Lockie, do you know much about Lockie? Nothing about him, which is a real okay. weird one. I, I think I would know who... Bryn brings the table, but I don't know Lucky at all. All right. He said he's been running with him for years. Like Never mentioned him. Oh, well, hear that, Lucky? Yeah. Literally, and, uh, maybe, maybe it's that Div 1 mates thing, you know, like Sam. Find <laughs> new mates. 
Forget about your old ones. <laughs> Sam hasn't mentioned you. <laughs> no surprise there, mate. No surprise there whatsoever. So Lockie did his first loop and he did 62 minutes. I've got a bit of a theory. I think Lockie didn't do the loop, but he needed to get it done to for his entry. So I reckon, because Bryn ran with him that day, I reckon Bryn wore two watches. Possible. I reckon he wore Lockie's and his because I had a look and they ran together and it was like their heart rate was the same the whole time. Yeah. So I reckon... Lockie doesn't exist. I don't think he's real. He's not. And uh, he might have a Facebook profile, but you need to sort of prove you're real before yeah. we can just take your word but for it's it. It's not easy. You know, you asked to invite a friend. I invited two because I've got loads of mates. What if you don't have a friend? Well, this is actually, let's talk about this because that was like the first thing that was said. It's like, all right, we got the approval from the big dogs to yeah. do the race. Let's all chuck them in there. Everyone invite a friend. First thing you do, bang, George invites two friends. Yeah, I've got loads of mates. You just went rogue on the rules though. Yeah. Are you not like a rules guy? I just, straight away, it drew me straight to Brian Brown and uh, Paul McBride just because I know how much they love our local area and I thought, and I also assumed Bryn has no mates, so I thought I'd go too. Oh, he's thought to yeah. take... He never talked about Lockie before. Well, well, he doesn't exist. No. So, okay, that makes a lot more sense now. Yeah. So, Brian Brown, who's also Brian Brannigan. Two names. Brian Brown Brannigan. Yeah. So, that sort of backfired as well, because he just pulled out of the race. He's not even in the country. He's not. He's not. He's, um, he, look, he's a, he's a veteran. Did you not check that before you invited? I just went straight for him. <laughs> um, he's a veteran. He's 60, 60 years old at least, I think, but a lot of experience, done some amazing... He might have done UTMB and stuff like that. Okay. Um, and just knows everything about the local area. And I don't know, whenever I think of running Newport, Avalon, Bilgola, I think of him. He okay. knows every single cut through possible. And um, he's. He, I chatted to him. He was like, oh, I wish I could be there for the race. But... Um, he won't be there. So I'm down to one. Okay. Well, so, so you're back to within the rules. Are you going to just go rogue and invite someone else again? No, I'm good. No, okay, I got, you're good. I got, okay. I got the message. <laughs> I, I, loud and clear. Well, you know what? Rule breaking. I, I don't know what I prefer more. You just breaking the rules and inviting <laughs> two people. Or some people I've said, hey, everyone invite a friend. You know, that way you can build a community. Who hasn't a bit invited more. a friend? All right. So Penny didn't invite a friend. Yep. Um, Warren didn't invite a friend. He's got so many mates. Like, that he runs with random people, Warren. Okay. So, Warren, you bloody listen to this, mate. You should invite someone. You invited Paul McBride. Yeah. So, Rich Barry. Rich has literally no mates. Okay, so that's fine. He's, he said that to me the other day. Okay, so Rich got no one to run it. No. Um, who else am I forgetting here? Dunsey invited... Who did Dunsey? Oh, Lockie. You haven't met Lockie yet. Yeah. Lockie, incredible guy. He did the UTA 100 last year. Uh, Yeah, last year. Mm -hmm. Um, I was training for the UT 100, UTA 100 last year and I, I did like a 14-week training block. Mm -hmm. I got it about eight weeks out and mentioned it to him. I said, hey, I'm doing the UTA 100. He's like, oh, I'll do that. He'd never run 100 before. Mm -hmm. um, he's like, oh, I'll do that. Jumped on board, did the eight weeks, did the UTA 100 with eight weeks notice. And sort of then we all just became a group mm -hmm. of runners then. You know, and then he paced me at Cozy Myler later that year. That's amazing. So he he definitely has his spot there and lives out at uh, Lovett Bay. That's cool. And he lives at the bottom of um, the towers. It's so crazy. So he's got hearing heaps these, of elevation up there. It's so crazy hearing that there's like now, you know, more people in this area that do exactly what I did last year. <laughs> <laughs> like I, I didn't know how to know that you were in Mona doing the same. There's another guy in Mona called, I think it's Alex Wilkinson. Have you heard of that name? No, I don't know. Mona Vale, he did the 100 miler. And like, it's so cool. There's not many people who do that. You know what I mean? Yeah, that's and very so true. And so it's yeah. really nice to hear there's just more people love at bay and... It's so cool, man. Yeah. I, that's why I think it's so interesting about this race is, you know, we should have the social element after 100%. a community of like 16 to 20 people or whatever it is um, that love. I'm, let's be honest. We all joke. This has almost been a bit of fun and a joke, but secretly we love this stuff. <laughs> like, it's not a joke. Like <laughs> It's no joke. Like when Sam's studying the course and going through every single street map name, <laughs> you're like, oh yeah, if you go up, you know, he knows every single road. Yeah. Um, then he loves that. Yeah and, yeah, and Warren and I and uh, and everyone, Rich and Bryn, we we love it. Like we love all the cut throughs, love all the hills. So, yeah, this is what's funny about trail. It's like partly in joke, partly like we love this stuff. <laughs> yeah. Like we do it for free. Uh, we pay our own money to do it. So much of it just it's to do so it. So true, so true. Um, okay, so uh, what else have we got to cover off here? I've got written down here the history of the five hundred, which I think is worth getting out there as well because mm. we know roughly how it came about. But mm. maybe the, I'll lead with this question is you touched on it before. How does it feel that 
knowing back in COVID, you and Warren came up with this. And now fast forward, we've got a multi-episode podcast on it. We've got the biggest (laughs) race on the Northern beaches. Some of the best athletes known to man that live on the Northern beaches. Well, UTMB also have just taken it on, right, as well. That's right. I forgot. UTMB got in touch. It's on the website. It's live. Yeah. Um, there's a newsletter coming out shortly. Uh, I've, I've heard some rumors <laughs> there could be a newsletter coming out. Yeah. Um, how does it feel that you guys created this thing back then and it's grown to it's, what it is? It's surreal. Um, like when we were creating it, it was hilarious, the process, because it was during COVID and, you know, Warren was just being the surveyor, whatever his job is. I don't know what he was doing. He's spending so much time on the computers, just looking at every single possible permutation because we were sacrificing elevation. And if you were trying to get it below 10K, sometimes you would only get like 480 meters vert. Yeah. You could get 10.5K and you get 520 vert, but we weren't satisfied with that. We wanted to be exactly 10 or just sub 10 and 500 vert. And I did some runs where I did it in 10K or something like 10.1k and I got 499 vert. Oh, wow. And I was running down Grandview and I was kind of trying to go up the street, uh, up the drives, kind of (laughs) curving my run like that, (laughs) but not curving it enough to get enough vert. And Warren always laughs about this, you know, me like running up the drives to try. And I got to the bottom, true to its word, stopped it 499. You know, I wasn't going to mess around with it. And yeah, the history around it is we basically found this really... It's the closed road, you know, the the road that's um, essentially a private road where you have to go through the fence mm-hmm. at the bottom yep. where the millionaires live. It's like such an expensive area. And we, we really couldn't work out how to do the course. Originally, we were going down to the beach and like the beach was a terrible place to run. You had to skirt across some millionaire's house. Um, and then a local said, you know, you know, we all just use the fence here. We come through the fence. And once we got that fence, it was like everything worked. And it was... It was literally 10K, 500 vert on the money, but that has changed a little bit since the water tower. The water tower used to have, at the top of the water tower, you used to have a little cut through where you could just cut straight up instead of where it plateaus out at the top, you kind of go around and come back up again. Mm-hmm. There was bushland that was damaged and you could just go straight up. So it actually mm-hmm. has cut out a little, the original course was to go straight up there because it was less distant, same vert. Okay. Now it's about 10.2K or 10.1. So you just because of that extra little bit, but still it's close enough. But yeah, to have like a race on it and a podcast, it's just <laughs> amazing. Like it's, it's really, really funny. I've been telling a lot of people about it. Good, like I've told good. my family, I've told my work <laughs> colleagues, they didn't care less, but I still tell them. <laughs> I was telling them today about it at lunch, you know, and, um, yeah, man, like I said to you earlier, it's just that sweet spot where post-UTA blues, mm-hmm. you're trying to hope you haven't got an injury, which luckily I don't have for once this time. And you're just in that point where you're like, what am I going to do for the next two months? And there's nothing going on, really. Yeah. But having this in the diary is like it's something to look forward to and like, yeah, go for it. And personally, I really want to get, I'd like to go 54 or something on this 54? run. 54? Yeah, yeah. If I get everything right, I think I can get close, possibly below 55, but it's going to be close to 55. If I'm really, if I nail my training, that's my goal is to try and get that 54. 54. Something. Yeah. Yeah. So that's me putting my goal out there. Um, I love that. That's good. Yeah. And I've sold that my coach, Joe. And I guess if you put a goal out, it holds you accountable and training a, and stuff. A bit of public accountability. I like that. Putting it out there. But you know, that's my, that's my goal is to try and go below 55, which hasn't been done before. I think it will be done. Uh, I think okay. on this day, everyone's going to get a PR. That's mm, what I think. Mm. The only thing that might stop it is the bit of congestion. Yep. But I actually think that it's like when me, Warren and Bryn did it, we were running, but it's not going to be like this. Like, we're going to really be running this one. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah. Really racing. And I think with the congestion side of it as well, like typically in a race, when you do have the fast guys coming up behind you, you know, you it's, you know, steady on your left, on your left, you know, like you, you're quite, yeah, but yeah. I would encourage people to just run their race on this one because yeah. it's a handicapped race. Mm. So it's not as if it's a, 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 like when someone's coming up next to you, you're fighting for that position. Yeah. Whereas in a normal race, when someone's going past you, yeah. you know, then like, obviously they're quicker, they're probably going, but you're actually fighting that person. And also your, your idea of no watches, I think is going to lead to very fast times. Oh, you think faster? Yeah. See, yeah. I thought that would... Yeah slow it down See, i think it's going to lead to sp- real quick times because i think what people do like rich is a good example he's always looking at his watch at gap pace he's obsessed with gap like we're at 330 gap or 345 gap you know so great adjusted pace on the hills and uh whereas i, I will just run on feel but 
if you take the watch off, I think people are just going to go harder than ever. You're just yeah. going to go hard as, and you're going to push yourself to that. I know this is what most likely to happen to me. I'll push myself to that limit where I've no idea how hard I'm going now. I'm just going as hard as possible. Yeah. And I actually think that's going to, for me, it'll benefit me. Um, I think for Rich, it'll benefit him because he'll stop looking at the gap and he'll just be <laughs> going hard. And if you don't have the watch, and you, I think you'll always go a bit harder. Yeah, that's yeah. interesting. Yeah. I, I, I actually thought it was going to have the adverse effect on it because what I thought was like, all right, I pictured you guys running around and I pictured, let's, let's use... Um, Let's use Rich as an example. Going up that hill, looking at the gap, knowing, all right, I just got to hold, you know, once I get to the top of the crest, I need to hold sub five minute Ks to get to the next climb and then I can rein it back, you know, yeah. for X amount of time. And I was like, it would suck that they know how well they're doing. Yeah, I think it's just going to... I was like, it's better if no one knows and you're just going off like how your legs feel. I think it's going to go make everyone quicker. Oh, yeah, I, okay. I really think that a watch can be a distraction as well. It's mm. like you're constantly looking at it. You're, make, you're making judgments. Just remove it. And for me, it's like I'll, it brings a bit of an insecurity, which makes me run faster. Because I'm like, I don't know what I'm at. I'm just going to go as hard as possible. Yeah. So, yeah, I, I don't know. For me, it'll work. I think for someone like Bruno, who's super chill, he wouldn't care less. Warren isn't going to be looking at the watch much either. So it's just going to make them go quick. I haven't tried it. I assume it does work though. You can just start your watch like four segments and stuff and put it in your pocket. It yeah. doesn't, you don't need it to like track heart rate and stuff like no, that. No. Like the, you can just start yeah, it. Because yeah, that's yeah. what I still want everyone to get their segments because yeah, that's going to be point. cool to look back yeah, at. Yeah, good point. So I think like everyone brings their watch. And what I'm thinking is you, as soon as you start, like say your clock will say 22 minutes and four yeah, seconds will be your start time. Yeah. As you cross the start line, you press start run chuck it straight in one of your pockets yeah. and then run and then when you cross the finish or line or you could do again. even you could do with a watch and it might because having it in your pocket might be a bit more frustrating to run with like wobbling your pocket mm. unless you've got the back pocket but I think you can make the screen just be literally like a watch face see what I was thinking so is just a watch I can't see anything on that all I can see is my time uh, the, the time of day yeah which you could use though uh, yeah well I think there might have to be part of the the code is that you don't, you know. Or a buff over it. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, like, yeah. Do you mean like this buff, Aspire 2 represent? Um, <laughs> See, I just lobbed yeah, that yeah, up for you yeah. there. Run strength, follow. Like, like and describe. Like and describe. <laughs> <laughs> like this. Yeah, just maybe that's why this buff has been waiting for this whole time. It could be it. Cover it up like that. There you go. I think that, I think that would be good because then you can see people's heart rates too. I reckon... I think you're going to have to... I think some runners, myself included, in the pocket, I think it would be a bit too fiddly. Yeah. I think having the watch on, you got you want this time. You don't want to lose this time. This is going to be like a quick time for some yeah. people. Yeah, okay. I reckon yeah. that's the go. Buff over yeah. the top. That's, right, good, right that's a good idea. That's... Um, well, we've got the... We've got the two race directors sitting right next to each other and we've just decided that. That's it. So that's, that's done. That's Executive in. decision. Um, okay, mate. I think we've covered pretty much everything. I suppose from our end, we just want to thank you guys for coming up with a course, allowing us to run this ridiculous race <laughs> on there as well. Yeah. And the fact that we've got people on specific training programs for it's this. Uh, I'm not sure because I think um, like other people's races, Lockie's doing an adventure race in March next year. Mm -hmm. So he's doing um, down in Tassie. I think Penny is running the 100 in Canberra, which I think you guys were thinking about doing yeah, as a group. Chimney. Yeah, yeah. So possible. she's doing that solo. Mm. Penny, I, mm. I know you haven't met her yet. Mm. Um, Dunsey is, I think he's training specifically for this race. He's got nothing at the moment. So this is his, his yeah. one thing. Yeah. What about yourself? I'm doing UTMB. What? Yeah, I'm doing no UTMB. No way. Yeah, I got into UTMB. Epic. So. It's incredible. Why I started doing Bugola 500 Oh, hikes you're going to need it. Is because I needed God. all the elevation. Yeah. So my training block was like the elevation. I was like, fuck it. I've got like 10K hikes. You're going to need it. So I've d that's where what's that's the, where it sort of came from. What's the from. gain? It's similar profile, isn't it? It's five. So what is it? Eight, ten thousand vert on one hundred and sixty. Ten thousand vert on one hundred and seventy. One hundred and seventy k. Yeah, I think it worked out to be like per ten k, it's like five hundred and yeah, you need eighty it. something. So it's more than Bill Goller five hundred. Incredible. But for forty hours for me, yeah, hopefully, yeah. Um, Sammy's obviously all in on this. Are you guys doing the hundred k team? We don't that know was thrown yet. Out it's there. thrown out there, but you know it's hard to get four blokes to, to organise any yeah, crap. That's you know, so, true. so it's so such true. a it's a difficult one. But I might do GSCR fifty miler in November. Okay. I was thinking of doing possibly the one in the Hounslow Classic in yep. the Blue Mountains. Um, we just posted that. Actually, one of the boys just posted that Dunsey, the big tall fella. Yeah. He's he's doing that one. Yeah, that's a brutal one. Yeah. Warren will do that. 
Warner's doing um, that one as I'm well. I'm sure now I've said it on the podcast, he'll be doing it. He has it. to do it. He has it. to do it. That's do it. it. Okay. Uh, and then, yeah, I think Bryn's pretty chill. He doesn't do many races, but when he does, he you know, he did one. His biggest one was UTA 50 and he came 16th. <laughs> so that's probably the only fifth. That's the only ultra that I can remember him doing. So oh, he's Amy, pretty chill. Amy Pohl now. She's got the Sydney Marathon. Yeah, she's nice. doing Sydney Mara. So the elevation for her doesn't. And really Sam's doing the Miler, right? Line. Sam's doing Miler. Yeah, he's doing Cosy Miler. Um, yeah. So there's there is other races, but, but I think not most so much in the next month or two. I was going to say yeah. I think most people have got like this. This is their A race. Oh. This is that like they're all great events, but this is the A race <laughs> essentially. <laughs> yeah, and I just I listen. I just say wrapping it up i guess uh yeah it's amazing what you're doing i think it's um part hilarious but also part genius you know and um that's trail and it's just i like we do it because it's fun like i say we put our own money into it because it's fun we spend thousands a year on doing this insane sport no one understands and i think just having this little community in the northern beaches that are all kind of like-minded all probably a bit crazier in their own way <laughs> yeah, um agree more. but um it's going to be so it's going to be so awesome to get everyone together and have that little social event afterwards whatever that might be and then you know make it like an annual thing um, it's definitely yeah. this, it has to be an annual thing yeah. it has to be and it'll grow and depending on what you want it to become in the future you know <laughs> this is the thing that we trail it's just the sport is exploding yeah yeah it's yeah. it's insane like yeah. it really it, it sounds silly but when you when i first listened to this podcast i was like it wouldn't be out of the question <laughs> I know this sounds stupid, but it wouldn't be out of the question for this to grow into a race. <laughs> you get 16 people running it, and then there's a freaking podcast out there. There's freaking in Aspire to Strength Training promoting it. And <laughs> one thing leads to another. That's where this sport's going at the moment. Yeah. It is just out of control, but it, it's so fun. It would be lovely to hear some other people hear of this race, you know, guys yeah, that happen. run around here and they go, hold on, I went on in on that. It's going to happen. I can, I can imagine. We're, we're going to be sitting here going through thousands of applications. It's going to be like the Barclay Marathon. <laughs> so we're just going to have to sit there and figure out what's going on. Yeah. Um, okay, let's wrap it up there. Yeah. Um, mate, thank you again for creating the course. Thank you for allowing this ridiculous race to happen. Thanks for being awesome. so, uh, to buying into it so much as well. Awesome. Um, I don't think we need anything from the guys other than maybe the people that haven't invited. I reckon we give them what, another week to invite someone and yeah. then that's it. It's closed. Yeah. So, because you, you need those people to buy in. They can't just invite someone the week prior. Nah. So, I reckon... It's hard to make a friend though within a week, isn't it? That's some of these guys. That's true. So, if you haven't invited someone, you've got a week from when this comes out. And then uh, I asked Sam who the next guest should be. He said, you have to have Warren. So, Warren, who's the next guest? Get Warren. Oh, sorry. I said Warren, didn't I? Get. I knew you were going to say that. Warren. George. He said, Please George, get Warren. George, who should I get? I, well, Warren would be absolutely amazing if you can get him on here um i don't think it's gonna happen um as a percentage very very low 10? i mean we could just say 50? we want to have like a coffee or something and then just get him here and ambush him but look there's a chance i'll i'll, I'll see what i can do with him um okay. Let, warren let's be good. do a backup because i don't want to spend the next eight weeks chasing warren and then you might need it. to go to some of your friends okay um, all right maybe one of the girls maybe we get all the girls on because we haven't heard from the girl side yet. Rich would love it. It's just a question of his, him getting on. Yeah, get, get one of the girls on. Yeah, yeah. all right. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Someone represent the girl side. Maybe yeah. we get all, all the three girls on. Yeah. Whatever. Yeah. All right. All right, man. Appreciate it. Thank Cheers, you very Sean. much. Thanks so much. Man. Absolute pleasure. See you later. Cheers.